Okay, hello everyone who has already joined. Let's wait like two, three more minutes. Uh, we're gonna start very soon. Make sure that's plugged in, okay? Yeah. Hello. Let's give it like two, three minutes, right, Roderick? Yes. Usually it takes a while for the people to to open up the browser. Hopefully this one is really good, so it doesn't require any installations and so on. But I think actually people are just watching through YouTube. Or yeah, that's right. So. Hello again, those who has just joined, who have just joined. Quick info for you, we're gonna start in around two, three minutes. So, uh, 14.04 Polish time, so stay with us. We wouldn't like you to miss a minute from, from the webinar. Okay, one minute to go. See, I'm watching the stream on YouTube. Okay. All right, a couple of more seconds. I think you have feedback from the microphone from the YouTube, uh, uh, Roderick. So, yeah, all right. Is it still there? Uh, it's working great right now. So okay, good. Well, I think we can start. What do you think? Uh, it's it's high time. So hello everyone, uh, welcome and thank you very much for joining our webinar, uh, which is titled "How to Develop Serverless Applications." Um, my name is uh, Mieszko Mularczyk. I am the CEO of Aptimia. Uh, we are co-hosting this webinar together with a partner of ours, uh, Nimbella Corporation from the United States. And uh, today we have a special guest uh, from, from the US uh, together with us, uh, Roderick Raba. Uh, he is the CTO, so Chief Technical Officer and co-founder of Nimbella. Uh, Roderick is based a little bit, maybe a few words about Roderick. So he's based in the New York area. Um, uh, whereas the Nimbella headquarters are in, in the Silicon Valley in California, United States. Uh, Roderick holds a PhD title. He's a former research scientist at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And he worked many years as a principal researcher at IBM, where he was one of the co-creators of Apache OpenWhisk. Um, the serverless platform, which is today used by many companies like Adobe, uh, IBM uh, in its cloud functions product, Naver Corporation and numerous other private companies. And two years ago, uh, Roderick decided to take it uh, one step further and he co-founded uh, Nimbella Corporation uh, and their product. It's actually based on Apache OpenWiz, but takes it to the to the next level. 
Um, so this is a quick intro. The webinar is going to be purely technical, so don't worry, we're, we're not going to shoot you with some marketing stuff. Uh, so the most of the part, most part of it uh, will be covered by Roderick. Just a little bit of an intro, how we got um, to each other, right? So, so Aptimia, our company, uh, is a Polish limited liability company. We've, we've been on the market almost six years and we're based in Szczecin in Poland and we've been collaborating with a couple of US-based companies. And actually, Nimbella is, is one of our partners. Um, we, we started working like two years ago. Well, actually, we participated in the creation of some of the components of, of the product, but mostly um, we are uh, really focused on, you know, bringing the Nimbella product into real life uh, scenarios. So, uh, the reason why we are also arranging this webinar is, of course, also to show us that we can help you as a software R&D company uh, to introduce it into your uh, business scenario, the product of Nimbella. So we, we, we are here as an integration implementation partner. Uh, so how we run the, the meeting, so we have done the personal intros and maybe a little bit of the companies, of course, uh, Nimbella will be covered by uh, Roderick. So Roderick is going to start in a moment uh, with a technical presentation. It's going to be a, a real meet for the software engineers, but also product managers, I think. Uh, those who registered to our webinar through, through the link and left your email address, you're gonna get a 90 days pro tire account at Nimbella. Uh, otherwise, you can always try out Nimbella product free, free of the charge with the basic account. Of course, those who forgot or didn't want to leave their email or for any other reasons did not have not registered, the link is going to work today still. So even after the webinar, if you leave your email uh, address and uh, first last name, that, that's enough. You're going to get this pro tire account anyway. So um, yeah, first you can see it and, and, and then register. It's also po possible. And then, uh, then after the presentation, we're going to have a couple of minutes for questions and answers. You can use uh, the, this web platform, if you go to the comment section, actually you see us uh, saying hello everyone uh, and you can post your comments or questions there. If we don't manage to answer any of the questions, I'm sure we will be able to answer them later. Roderick will give you a hint at the end of the presentation how we can post some comments or questions. Uh, those who we are not able to answer. If you want to reach us, Aptimia, you can reach us by by our web page in the contact section, and you can reach me directly as well through the LinkedIn, for example. So I, I'm sure you will manage. So, uh, Roderick, the stage is yours. Again, thank you very much for for joining this this webinar, Roderick, and all of you guys. Roderick, go ahead. All right. Thanks for that introduction and for helping to organize this uh, Apti talk, I think, as you told me, you call them. Um, so I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to uh, speak to a new audience. Uh, I think to just expand a little bit on how we met, uh, I think Aptimia was, or developers from Aptimia were the first users of, first external users of the Numbella platform uh, and some of the tooling that you'll see here. And I think a lot of the feedback we got from there went into improving our command line tools and our overall developer experience. Uh, so thank you for uh, being good stewards of the technology. Uh, look forward to more collaborations in the future. At Nimbella, uh, we're building a new cloud. Um, but it's a different kind of cloud in that uh, we don't operate infrastructure ourselves. The uh, cloud providers themselves that um, are large, um, they operate infrastructure and data centers all around the world. They have names like Amazon and um, uh, Google, uh, Microsoft, IBM, et cetera. Um, they provide really powerful clouds and essentially supercomputers that are accessible to expert developers. Um, our view and our mission is essentially to make the cloud accessible to every developer. 
to really lower the barrier of entry and make it so that uh, developers of all walks of life and of all developer uh, experiences uh, can really tap into the power of the supercomputer and build cloud applications. Uh, I'm not seeing my slides, uh, Julia, on the YouTube stream. Just want to make sure those are coming through. Um, so, and, and that's essentially our mission. And this is where serverless really comes from. Uh, it's this power of being able to develop applications, focus on the logic that you're trying to create, and deploy them to the cloud, have them run, have them scale, and just do it in a way that uh, frees you, the developer, from having to think about any of the underlying infrastructure. This is the power of serverless. This is what I want to get across to you today. And I'm going to start with just some code. Uh, I think being true to uh, what we are as developers, uh, I'd like you to follow along. If this is the first time you've heard of serverless, uh, you're not sure what this is, um, or maybe you've tried on some other clouds before and you'd like to understand a little bit more uh, some of its capabilities and powers, um, let's start with an example. So how do you start serverless? And how do you amplify this notion that it's really about focus on just what you want to build? So suppose I have an idea. Uh, right? I want to say hello world. Um, and I want to make that ho my hello to the world an API so that anybody could hit this link that I have on the screen, bit.ly slash hello fn, and you know, they get a message. Um, you can try this right now. So if you're watching and you type this in your browser, uh, you'll see there's a response that comes from this API. And you can try it for yourself on our Functions Playground. And what you see on the Functions Playground is a screen that looks like this. This is entirely in your browser. Uh, you have a code editor, uh, and you can write some code. Uh, this is some uh, code snippet written in JavaScript. And if you tried the bit.ly link I shared uh, on the previous slide, uh, this is the function that's running every time somebody hits that URL. If there's no query parameter or a post parameter uh, in the API request that says what your name is, uh, then it will give you a message. Uh, and if not, it will use uh, it will give you uh, a standard message. Otherwise, it'll use your name as part of the response. You can edit this code. Uh, you can run it directly from your browser. More importantly, you can publish it. And when you publish it, you get a URL that's specific to you, every visitor to the playground. And you can use that URL just like I did. Uh, you can export it to your applications. Uh, you can use it in your testing. You can use it with Postman or with curl. Um, you've essentially just taken a function um, from your browser and in one click, turned it into an API, right? This is the power of serverless. It's the ability to export code and turn your functions, your ideas into APIs that then others can consume or you can further compose into interesting things. And the power of serverless isn't just that you can do this, uh, essentially have this function that's instantly reactive. When an event comes in, somebody invokes the function by visiting URL, you run the function instantly that's being done in the cloud for you. Um, it's not just this, it's that you can consume lots of different events. It doesn't just need to be an HTTP request. Uh, it could be something like a text message um, or a Twitter feed, an Instagram post, a file upload. You know, many different kinds of events could trigger your function. So the function is reactive, it's reacting to events. Moreover, if you have more events, more functions just run. But you as a developer haven't thought about any of how many servers do I need to run this code? How am I actually going to run this code? Which cloud am I running this code on? Right? All of these become distractions. When you want to build an application are important. But are these really the important things that you as a developer need to worry about versus offload those to the serverless cloud and let it deal with it? You'll notice that in this example and what I showed you in the functions playground, it was just my functions. It was the code snippet that I have highlighted in blue. I didn't write any server-related code. I didn't say, hey, route this API path to this function and listen on a particular port. In fact, I didn't even provision any infrastructure at all. I didn't say, OK, take this code and run it on this machine, whether it's a, a VM instance on, on a cloud provider or it's a container. Uh, I didn't do any of that. I just said, here's my function. You, cloud provider, now it's your responsibility to run it. And this is the serverless promise. And it's not that you can just do this with one language. Uh, if Node is not your cup of tea, uh, I should have asked, what do you drink in Poland? Uh, but you know, if, if Node is not your best uh, language, then you could do this in many other languages. You can do this in Golang. You can do it in PHP uh, or in Python. 
Moreover, I think the power here is that you can choose the, the language that really helps you do your job better. And sometimes when you're building applications and you're building APIs, it may be prudent in some cases justified to actually use different languages to implement different APIs. And by being able to sort of focus on just the core logic you need to implement, it becomes feasible. And everything you're consuming is through APIs, not so much the code itself anymore. I think this is also one of the powerful advantages of a serverless programming model and a serverless mindset. So this is a brief introduction to serverless. I'm going to take you through and sort of walk you through a little bit more of how we got here, why we're here, and build actual serverless applications with you. What I showed you is a simple function that is not an application. How do you go from applying the power of serverless functions to serverless applications? So at Nimbella, we like to think in terms of applications that you deploy. And deploy is a really important and powerful primitive that we've built and we've integrated with our tooling so that you're building entire applications and you're deploying them to the cloud. And by being able to do this in a serverless way and adopting a serverless mentality, um, you get two things. You get to create faster and you get to focus because you're not distracted by the infrastructure you have to manage, the servers you need to secure, the amount of scaling you need to handle, that's all done for you. And imagine now how much time, if you had to build an application, you would have spent on all these things. And now imagine what else you could do because you have free time, essentially, or you've reclaimed that time to do something of higher value. So the power of serverless is really in its focus on what matters to you as a developer at the end of the day. Build beautiful, create, and powerful applications that deliver value to your end users. So there are several benefits to serverless. I sort of talked about this reactive model where a function runs in the cloud, it consumes events, and it just scales. As you get uh, more events, it just runs. Um, you know, how many servers do you need? Do you really care? Uh, that's what the serverless provider's responsibility is. Manage and figure out how to run your code most efficiently. <clears throat> And moreover, it's now not your responsibility to secure anything but your code. You still have to secure your code and make sure you're not doing silly things uh, with your code. But the underlying operating system, the underlying kernel, even the underlying hardware uh, is no longer for you to worry about. That's managed for you by the cloud provider. So your code is more secure because you own less of the stack. And you're deferring that, that responsibility to cloud providers whose main job is to essentially provide a substrate that is safe and secure uh, and uh, as I said, a supercomputer for you to run your workloads on. I think there's another really powerful advantage uh, for developers here is that uh, it's a utility-based model that really breaks down the cost based on how many functions you might run when you're talking about serverless functions or how many files you consume, uh, how much network bandwidth you consume. So if your application is essentially with the lights off, it's not running at all, your cost is zero or near zero. And as you scale up and you grow, your costs increase. Um, but I think that's a good problem to have. You want your cost to be proportional to your success. And you know, when it's early and you're just starting out, you don't want to pay a lot of money to the cloud providers. And this is the beauty of serverless. Your costs are proportional or should be proportional to your utilization. And to give you a context, uh, right? think about running thousands of functions, you know, uh, like my hello world. Um, it's kind of early. Uh, in the morning and yes, so I don't expect a lot of people to be doing it. Uh, you know, maybe if uh, as people watch this video, there'll be lots of users hitting that URL, thousands, let's say. So I can do a thousand invocations of that function in seconds. It costs very little. You know, uh, in fact, you can do up to a million operations, and it wouldn't even cost you a dollar. Um, it would cost you a quarter of a dollar uh, in U.S. terms. It's very cheap, right? So it gives you the capability to run thousands of functions at very low cost. I think this, is, this power is transformative. Right? What can you do with this power? What kind of applications can you now build that were just prohibitively expensive to do before or difficult in that you had to really think about how to parallelize your application, uh, write distributed code, or you write parallel code? I don't have to do any of that anymore. I can do the simpler thing and let the crowd provider's power of sort of just providing infinite compute, essentially, uh, to handle the rest for me. And in some ways, this is a natural evolution of computing. And how we are here is just looking at the history of where we've come. Uh, you know, 
automation and abstraction have long been part of our computing history, uh, where you started with essentially companies having on-premise hardware. Uh, we used to build some uh, at my lab at IBM, um, where you run your applications on hardware, sometimes that you built yourself. Um, to then saying, well, do I really need to have these machines in my lab? Uh, I'll just rent some infrastructure. Uh, and then platforms as a service became a thing uh, and still a thing. Um, you know, so if you're familiar with Heroku, for example, it's a good example of essentially prepackaged software where you add some bits and pieces to it and then they just run for you in the cloud. And in each of these, you know, the economic model changed. So when it was on-prem infrastructure, you paid for the machines, you paid for electricity, you paid for warehousing those machines. But for the most part, you can think of on-prem as dollars for machines. And as we shifted towards more fine-grained consumption of infrastructure towards platform as service, we changed the model. Now you're renting machines by the hour. And so serverless functions or functions as a service, you pay per request. So you pay for how many times your function runs and how long it runs, what resources it consumes. So it's a more fine-grained way of doing uh, your billing. But with this power, this economic shift comes this great uh, capabilities uh, that we've talked about. Now, as a developer, it makes it far more accessible to tap into the power of the cloud. And I can do it without breaking the bank. But serverless isn't just some toy technology. Uh, this is fairly mature technology today. And it's still in the early days, however, um, as I'll explain in a couple of slides. It's used by a number of enterprise organizations. This is just a small sampling of organizations whose names you might recognize um, that have used the power of serverless to transform parts of their organization with small teams that have been able to deliver faster uh, and essentially transform their, uh, their company business in terms of what they deliver to their end users. And a number of these use, use cases I've taken from Amazon Web Services. Uh, Amazon started this movement towards serverless, if you will, with the announcement of a service they called Lambda, or Amazon Lambda, uh, about five or six years ago. Five years ago, I believe. Uh, November 2014, <clears throat> uh, so six. And you know, since then, they didn't call it serverless at the time, but since then, this shift towards recognizing this beauty and the power here has sort of transformed itself into the serverless movement. And often, when you're talking about adopting serverless at enterprise scale, you're talking about re-architecting the application. But you can't just sort of do that in ways that are, um, you could do that with a gentle migration path. Uh, you can do that by starting on green fields. And so often, this transformation from monolithic or legacy applications to serverless requires sort of a complete buy-in to the serverless methodology. The power of what we're trying to do at Nambella is to say, you don't need to do this in a very abrupt way, but you could do this in a gentle migration path. And I think some of these successful use cases uh, that Amazon has published with their partners have demonstrated that you can do this gentle migration, and it's probably the best way to do it in a, in a number of ways. Uh, if you're starting fresh and you've never looked at serverless before, uh, I think you should. And the reason I started with the playground is uh, to give you a taste of what serverless and the power of serverless is like. You know, imagine not having this capability and you know, take your application or take some function code and turn it into some server and run it as an API. What would you have to do? What are the steps you would have to do? Go through that mental exercise and now compare the two. And I think once you go serverless, the power sort of makes you never want to go back. Um, so another level of sort of um, scale of how we are today is, you know, considering in 2015, shortly after Amazon Lambda launched, um, AWS was doing about 2 billion serverless functions a day. Today, that number is in the trillions. And, you know, if you look at that growth from 2015 to 2020, it's more than exponential growth. This is pretty powerful. But if you look at the share of the compute that serverless functions has as a totality of everything else the cloud is handling, sort of traditional server workloads, it's a tiny, tiny fraction. So this is why we're still in the early days of serverless. The whole cloud has not moved to the serverless model. But it's happening in ways, in subtle ways that maybe you don't recognize yet. For example, if you're using any API, you're serverless because you're not thinking about how that API is run. You're sort of delegating it to whoever is offering that API to run. If you're using databases as a service, you know, increasingly there's lots of databases as a service that are becoming serverless. 
You're not thinking about scaling up the database. Uh, you're not thinking about the infrastructure for a database. A lot of infrastructure is going exactly in this direction. So in my view, serverless makes developers' life easier, makes you faster as a developer. I think it has desirable properties, and they're necessary because this power of compute you know, should be accessible to a lot more developers than it is today. So in my view, and so I like to say that serverless is inevitable. It is happening. And if you haven't caught on to this movement, it's, uh, it's a good time to start, especially if you're building new applications. So what I wanted to spend a few minutes on uh, for the rest of the talk is to talk about Nimbella and how Nimbella helps you sort of develop applications in this serverless mentality. And we call our company Nimbella because we believe the cloud should be beautiful. And uh, <clears throat> our primitive concept, essentially what we're trying to do is to build complete applications. You know, what I showed you earlier when I started my talk with was a function, a snippet of code. But that's not an application. Right? To build complete applications, I need more. I need not just the code. I need to put state around it. I need to put databases around it. I need to put more capabilities. We're going to get into that. But I want to be able to do it easier than it is today, far easier. We want to be the fastest and the best at sort of being able to tap into that cloud and remove as many gates as possible so that the cloud is accessible. So what are these other things that you need to build applications? Like I said, functions are essentially just compute. But if you look at a computer, there's more to it than just a compute. It's not just a CPU. There's the networking. There's a storage. <clears throat> there's a lot of infrastructure that's sort of integrated uh, that you have to put together in the cloud to, develop, to deliver an application. And in Nimbella, we're essentially bringing this sim seamless integration in a way that, again, echoes and reifies the serverless promise of focus. Focus on just what you need and nothing else. So what I'm going to show you with some real code and some examples is how do you deploy a stateful serverless application? Uh, and doing it in a way where every deployment is repeatable. So you're deploying entire applications in a repeatable way. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, as I go along, and uh, you're going to see that you can actually replicate what I'm doing. And maybe you'll do it at the same speed that I'm doing it, because it's that fast and that convenient. Um, you, if I share a project, an Umbella project, for example, on GitHub, um, you should be able to take that project and deploy it to an instance of your cloud just like that. And we'd like to make that just work. And that's what I'm going to get the point across, I'd like to get the point across as I go along here. And when you start, you know, sometimes you have that idea, you have that excitement. I just want to build. I don't want to get distracted by other things. Just like I don't want to get distracted by thinking about my server or the infrastructure, which cloud I'm running this on. I don't want to get distracted by manifest, to sort of describe my application. Hey, it's just my code. Just take my code. I don't want to do anything else. And that's what we've tried to do. So this example is a page counter. Um, if you go to the GitHub link there, you'll see that we have this example and a number of others. It's a simple app. It's a single page application where there's a front end uh, that shows what visitor you are and what date uh, this app was deployed. And you know, if you're participating with this, drop your number, uh, the visitor number, when we share uh, this in a couple of slides. And if you look in GitHub at this project, uh, this is it. This is a directory tree and directory and file tree for this project. Uh, there's a web folder, which has the index HTML page and the logo. Uh, and then there's uh, a package uh, folder that contains um, visits with two files, counter.php uh, and info.php. So here I pick PHP to implement this application, again, showing that you could do this in any language of your choice, effectively. Um, these two functions, essentially, implement the APIs I want. One. Uh, the info API tells me when this application was deployed. The counter uh, increments the counter every time the page is loaded. So it's implementing my counter API. This application is stateful because I need to remember those two things. When did I deploy this app? And how many people have visited this page? And so when you deploy this to the Nimbella cloud, there's a number of things that happen for you right out of the box without you having to think about it. Right? There's the compute, which runs your functions. There's a data store where your counter is stored. Uh, and then there's an object store, which is used both for storing web buckets uh, and maybe other objects like what day this application was deployed. Um, and your application, your front end pieces of your code are deployed to, are essentially fronted from the object store by a CDN, Content Delivery Network. 
that means your application is globally available um, with very low latencies. Again, the power of serverless without you having to think about any of that. It's just my code. Run it. Run it well. Run it so that it scales. And you can do, you can deploy this application if you follow along with me in just three steps. So the first step is create an account. Uh, and you can do this uh, from uh, nimbella.com slash sign up. I think the link appears in the chat as I'm going along. It takes about 60 seconds for your account to be essentially fully ready, and you can get started. When you've got your account, uh, you'll land on a page where you'll see a link for what we call a Numbella Workbench. Uh, the Numbella Workbench is essentially a browser-based interface. I'm showing a screenshot of it here, uh, where you can interact with the Numbella Cloud. Uh, but it's a terminal-based experience in some ways, and it mixes essentially UI elements and clickable elements with a terminal-like experience. So from the Workbench, you can type commands, uh, like I'm, the one I'm going to show you later, to deploy this project. Uh, right from your browser, no, no tools needed to get started. But you can also do other things, like look at what actions, what functions I've deployed, um, how many have run, which ones are fast, which ones are slow, which ones have failed. Hey, show me logs for my functions, et cetera. You can do that from the workbench. There's also a terminal, uh, a command line tool that you can run from your terminal. The important thing is that whether you use the workbench or the terminal, it's the same set of commands. And you could do this and sort of transition back and forth between them as you see fit and as your workflow dictates as a developer. So if you've gotten to this step and you've created an account, you've went to the workbench uh, and you type this command, project deploy, and I'm giving the URL here of the visits app from GitHub, it will deploy a copy of this visits application to your own dedicated namespace. You will see a URL at the end of the application as I'm gonna show you, and you can take that and share it with your friends and say, hey, what visitor number you are? Uh, you know, feel free to also post that in the chat, and others could try it out. Sometimes, uh, it, it, not sometimes, uh, when you deploy your first project, it might take two to three minutes sometimes for DNS propagations to happen worldwide. And so you may get a 404 after you've deployed your application. Um, you know, if you do that, refresh in a couple of minutes, and that error goes away. And this is what you would see if you tried this and you've gotten this far. So you've run project deploy from the workbench. You'll see some output saying identifying the namespace uh, that is yours, dedicated to you, uh, and what was deployed. Uh, in this case, two actions or two serverless functions and the web content uh, deployed to the URL. This domain that you get is yours. It is uh, HTTPS. It has a certificate, an SSL certificate. Um, it's backed by a CDN for serving the front end content. Uh, your APIs are routed to your functions. And if you look through the code, you'll see it's very simple. Again, just your code and nothing else. Uh, you can try this out, bit.ly slash webinar hello. Uh, and you can let us know what visitor number you are uh, in the chat. Kind of a fun little thing uh, to do. But you're done, right? At this point, you're done. You've taken this code. You've deployed it. Your application is live. Right? I didn't have to think about the SSL, the domain name. Uh, the containers to run my code, the servers, the, uh, the infrastructure. Hey, where are my logs going? Uh, is this scaling? Um, you know, uh, cores issues. You know, if you've built web applications, have you tried to fix cores between your front end and your back end? Right? There's a number of things that are sort of done for you by the Nubella Cloud right out of the box. So you can just build, right? And I think this is the power of serverless and the power of serverless with Nubella. Now, we have a lot more sophisticated examples on Nimbella.io. And um, if you're watching this and you're, you're in the US, we actually just added a new demo application uh, that we're calling Election 2020. Uh, so if you have uh, some ideas for how to build election-related APIs, we've aggregated uh, application-related apps. We've aggregated a number of APIs, and we've put them out there. And uh, I missed an opportunity. I should have had a slide here. Actually, let me just go show that. I think it's kind of cool. So you can build an interesting application um, which uses these election APIs, and you can enter our contest. Uh, and uh, we're giving away a grand prize of uh, $20, $20, uh, US dollars, that is, for the best application that's submitted. Um, you can read the contest rules there. And we've essentially built um, this starter project. Let me show it here. 
so here it is. Um, let's look at, you know, you can look at previous election results. We've aggregated a number of APIs that you could run. They're all available for you here. If you use Postman, uh, these will be available to run in Postman, but the entire project is out on GitHub. And if you send us a couple of pull requests, you could also have a chance of uh, also winning uh, some, some code. I've, there's a number of issues that we've created labeled election starter uh, that will essentially uh, give you a chance of both getting experience with serverless, uh, using the Nubella Cloud, and having a chance to have some fun and uh, participate in the contest. So getting back to regularly scheduled programming. On our Nubella page, nubella.io and in GitHub, you'll find a number of projects uh, out there. Uh, we talked about visits. I just impromptu talked about election 2020. Uh, but we have a number of other applications. So OCR is optical character recognition, where you can upload images, and the images are analyzed for text, and the text is uh, sort of extracted from the images, a trading application, a chat room, and some others. So I want to end with one more fun challenge uh, for you. And you know, this is to sort of help you get started on your serverless journey. Uh, you know, the point is, this isn't that easy to get started. And once you start, you're doing your future self a service because the power of computing and the power of super, the supercomputer in the cloud uh, really becomes far more accessible and at your fingertips. And I think it's just a better way of building applications. So here's another single page application. It's serverless, of course, implemented in JavaScript. Uh, do you have ideas to make it better? So uh, this application is uh, a QR code generator. And if you have a smartphone or some QR reader, you can scan that QR code. And it will take you to the GitHub project I set up, which allows you to look at um, you know, the source code. And then you can submit pull requests for it. If you don't have a QR reader, that's fine. Uh, here's the link, uh, bit, bit.ly slash I want a prize. And um, you'll see that there's a number of things that you could do with this application. But fundamentally, it's single page app, uh, index.html, and a single API at the, uh, at the back end. You can take that API, uh, you can stick it into Postman, and you can run it. And you'll see based on sort of the input I'm showing here, you give it some text, like this is the text I want to QR code, and it generates a QR code for you. It stores it in the Nubella Cloud uh, dynamically as you're generating it, and then returns that image URL for you, which gets rendered on, on the web page. Uh, so simple API, it's very simple. Uh, HTML uh, and JavaScript, so there's no frameworks, there's really no frills. Uh, very, very easy to sort of grok and understand. Uh, but it's using a number of components of the Nubella Cloud. One is the ability to deploy code as functions, using the object store to store the QR images. And you'll be surprised. I have this app running, and a lot of people actually type the same thing. Usually it's hello or, or hello world. Um, so some ideas could be, for example, reusing the object store for text that's, that's the same. You can develop locally. You can test in the cloud. It's really very powerful and flexible. So. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm encouraging you is uh, if you're looking for an easy thing to just get started and what your appetite and get some experience uh, with the tools and how you actually build serverless, this is another good way of getting started. The election app might just feel like uh, too much. This is much simpler. And if you submit a pull request, I again will send you a prize uh, for, for your effort and participation. Your serverless journey really starts with just one function. And this is why I started with the functions playground. Uh, this isn't some complicated uh, mystery in my view. You can just start with one first baby step. And the road ahead uh, you know, starts with, uh, you, you can't traverse a long road without the first step. And this will be your first step. So start there. Uh, write one function, deploy it, and see how powerful it is. In fact, I'm going to show you that you could do more in the function playground than Hello World. So let me just break out here and come to the workbench. Uh, the playground itself is actually part of our workbench. So uh, I've just escaped the playground by hitting escape. And you see, this is the workbench here. And I can, um, since I've deployed the, the visits app before, you'll see I have my two APIs uh, right there. So in the functions playground, there's a number of other things you could do. And not just in JavaScript. You could, we have sample languages in uh, sample functions in other languages like Java, Go, and PHP. And you can run them all from the playground without any tools or anything on your part. So Go is interesting, or Java is interesting, because these are languages that are usually compiled. 
Uh, and so when you compile these languages, you have to think about, OK, well, how am I compiling them? But in this case, I can actually just run the pure JavaScript source code, and it just runs. And so I can edit this and go as I go along. So let's look at a more interesting um, snippet of code. So this is an image resizer. Uh, so this is a bit more complex code. Uh, it's importing some packages. Um, and it's taking a URL of a large kitten. Apologies to dog lovers everywhere. Uh, so this is a large image of a cat. And when I run this function, it's actually going to shrink. It's going to resize the image. Uh, if I don't provide any parameters, it's going to resize it to 128 by 128. So when I click Run, it's going to fetch this image, resize it, and there's the little mini cat. So you can do a lot, actually, in the Functions Playground. Even if you don't want to create an account, uh, I can export um, this API endpoint. And so this URL essentially now becomes an API. And so you can get started. Uh, you can try this out, even without signing up for an Umbella account. Um, we'd like to eventually convince you that this is worthwhile and worth your experience. But you can always get started with no risk. Our goal at Umbella, like I said, and I hope uh, I've sort of given you a sense of how we're trying to do that, is to make programming the cloud easy so that you, as a developer, is developing at the speed of innovation. Nothing else should get in your way. So we're trying to remove all the gatekeepers. Build, create, and that's really the power of the serverless cloud. The infrastructure is somebody else's headache, and that's really our headache uh, at Nambella, and really the headache of all the cloud providers, because you can do serverless computing on uh, all the major cloud providers today. So thank you. Uh, that's all I wanted to cover. I want to thank you for attending and watching this, whether live now or on replay. Uh, thanks again to Eptimia for organizing this event. And we always love feedback. Uh, so if you watch this, you can reach out to us uh, on feedback at nimbella.com. Uh, you can message me on Twitter, at uh, Raba. Uh, you can join our Slack channel, or you can leave us uh, comments on this post. All right. Time for questions, right? So. Do you see yeah. any questions popping up? I don't see any questions. I actually you'll you guys who can post your questions in the comment section right now. So we have a couple of minutes to answer at least some of them right now. I'm really curious about this election-related apps uh, people are, are going to post, <laughs> Roderick. <so. laughs> yeah. we, we just did it. It was sort of, uh, I mean, the app came together fairly quickly. Uh, and uh, uh, we, had, we had some fun with it. And you know, we, we don't know what people will build. Uh, we have terms and rules, of course. You have to abide by code of conduct. But I'm curious what people will build. Uh, and I think it's an yeah. interesting way of, uh, of getting some of that creativity showing. Yeah, right timing. <laughs> I think if we don't have any questions, oh, yeah, there is one uh, question. You can take it. Uh, I, I can't see it. Can you read it to me? Or? Uh, it's from Rhino Simon. What is the usual training path to introduce such a technology in a company or development shop? So. Right. Uh, gentle migration. Uh, I think the um, there's a, there's a number of tutorials, some that we're building at Nimbella uh, and at other from other cloud providers uh, that sort of introduce serverless and how you adopt a serverless mentality. Um, if you send me an email, I can uh, send you some references offline. But I think the fundamental primitive, if you're at a large organization, is gentle migration. You can't rewrite your entire application and say, okay. Uh, you know, I want I want to do serverless. It's just too disruptive. So you have to do it gently. Uh, it's easier when you're doing new applications. You train and sort of you build applications in this way. And it doesn't actually take a lot uh, to sort of understand how to do this. It's more uh, difficulty when you're migrating existing code. Uh, but if you're thinking about applications, you understand APIs. Uh, one of the integrations we've just announced is with Postman. So it's an API first mentality where you have your APIs, you generate your project. From your API, you start mocking the implementation with real code that lives in the cloud, and then you iteratively refine. And this whole process of being able to essentially take a small piece of code, deploy it to the cloud, iterate, and continue to repeat in the deployments 
gives you that iterative mentality. So it's really powerful in that way and I think works well with developer experience. Uh, but if you're a large organization, you sort of want to uh, essentially recoup investments in infrastructure and retrain that workforce for uh, essentially development, uh, you know, I think I can give you some, some guidance offline if you reach out to me. Thank you. Or, or of course, you can work with organizations like Aptimia. Uh, they're very mm -hmm. good at that, and they helped us build uh, our very first uh, uh, application on our platform uh, very successfully. Yeah, definitely. You can reach us as well um, to speed up your development as well uh, using external uh, services. And more questions, guys. Uh, we have a couple of minutes, right? So we start like, I don't know, 1404 so we can we can wait uh, for a question to come otherwise i think we, we will be able to, to close the webinar just a couple of orders yes how can i reach you uh, so i guess uh, Roderick, you yeah so you can you can either twitter me i think the slide is still showing at twitter uh, at braba at my last name or I'm Roderick at Nimbella.com, R-O-D-R-I-C at Nimbella.com. All right. And for, for myself, you can reach us at office at Aptimia.com or my first last name at Aptimia.com or just LinkedIn. Uh, you can, I think, easily find uh, myself as well. So Mieszko.Mularczyk at Aptimia.com or office at Aptimia.com. Well, somebody posted that the posting visitor number is now 8666. So, oh, uh -oh. <laughs> somebody else has to visit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Evil visitor. <laughs> All right, Roderick, I think, uh, yeah, we promised the webinar to be short and concise. So, uh, Maybe it's a time to close it. People know how to reach us. The webinar will be available offline as well on the Nimbella YouTube channel. So if you missed any part of it, you can watch it later or you can forward it to, to, to other developers uh, from your organization to, to, to see it before uh, posting your questions to, uh, to Roderick or to, to, to Aptinia. Uh, anything to add? Shall we? No, this was, this was great. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you for joining and uh, stay tuned. Uh, and good luck with, with your applications on the Nimbella platform.